Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We have a white box with nothing on it except smartware. Now that usually means it's a prototype because number one notoriously puts their product ID information on the side of the box. And indeed, inside we are looking at the prototype number one F7 watch. Wow, yeah. Well, what is it? Let's take a look since it's brand spanking new. It's not even on the market yet, folks. Um, Banggood is the only source so far that has listed it. This watch comes directly to us from number one, the pre-prototype version of it. Inside, we have the uh, Nordic chip. It's got GPS on board and uh, four different side buttons on here. Bluetooth is supported, of course, built-in GPS. It does temperature, ambient temperature, real-time, and it does real-time height measurement as well, which also means it has a barometer as well as an, ant uh, an altimeter. The, uh, we're using Bluetooth 4.2 for low energy, multi-sport support, IP67, fully waterproof, very ruggedized, the 400 milliamp hour battery, and so forth. Okay, uh, let's dig in. Inside the box, we have a manual, and we always like to show you that right off the bat. Now, this manual, and I've gone through this once already, turns out to be pretty good. So if you really pay attention this time, you'll get a feel for how it works. The uh, QR code you're gonna download, or you can go directly to uh, the Google Play Store and look for H+. That's gonna be the tethering app that we use. And charging instructions on how we hook it up to the charger. We'll show you that in a second. It's got its own kind of unique charger. And then uh, how you get into the different uh, functions. This is a common one. If you push the upper right hand button, you get into uh, your basic step count, which is different than all the different multi-sport modes. When you go over to heart rate, you can come in and do an instantaneous heart rate reading, or by pushing the buttons the right way, you can get a graph of the last several hours, I believe a 16 hour report of your heart rate. When you get into the thermometer, um, you can get the ambient reading in degrees centigrade and a chart that will give you a temperature over time for your specific watch. Same with barometric pressure in KPA. Okay. Then you also have your altitude with the altimeter with an additional uh, area that you can reset the altitude to zero. So if you're at the base of the mountain, you're going to climb, you can make sure you reset it before you start out. You also have a speedometer on board. So while you're driving, you can look at your watch in kilometers per hour and see what speeds you're doing, I guess. You have an onboard compass. After calibration, you can get in there and see what uh, your, your bearing is, what you're heading. Then you get into the sports mode. Run is the first one, and this goes through the buttons that you push to get it to work. It is a bit confusing. Um, I'm going to do my best to show you on the actual watch what this does. You have mountain climbing. You have, they call it riding, but it's actually cycling. Uh-huh. Then um, the ones that don't need a GPS for operation, like the treadmill, uh, will come up and you won't see the uh, GPS activated. You have basketball, mm -hmm. badminton, okay, and then football, which is continued on to the next page, and that's soccer, uh, known here in the US and then uh, settings where you get into the up the, the process of setting up all of these different features where you can specify specific targets that it will uh, keep track of for you and all the way down to sedentary reminders and even sleep monitoring capability 
And then your heart rate, it's the all day 24-7 uh, heart rate you can turn on and off and you can set alarms for your heart rate as well. Okay, good stuff. A very sophisticated watch. We've got GPS, vibration, uh, twist your wrist to wake the screen, all of that's supported. Um, personal information where you put in your specifics helps the watch calculate some stuff. And you're able to actually update firmware with this watch if they come up with some bug fixes or enhancements. As long as you're Bluetooth tethered to the app on your phone, you'll be able to uh, do a firmware update as well. And uh, information from number one on warranty. And that's it for the manual in English. The charger now looks like this. It's uh, the magnetic clip kind. It's got a little tag on it. Talks about charging. Uh -huh. Please note the direction of the charger. And the reason is, you know, there's only two little spots here and it's magnetic. And so you want to make sure that you're not going backwards. So see to it that you're clipping it on the way that it naturally wants to go and not backwards. See it? It'll... It'll join either way. So you've got these little guide pins here. You want to line that up and make sure that it's in there. If you're going the opposite way, I guess it's not mating. I don't know. It looks like it's working both ways to me. Well, heed the warning, folks. <laughs> Maybe that's why it didn't charge last night. No. Wow, that is interesting, though. About the same force on both directions. Okay, and it's USB connected as well. So the watch itself, it's really, really made well. You've got a solid back plate. This thing is definitely waterproof. You have the uh, charging, the heart rate sensor area, and then this whole ruggedized everything, the band itself, the watch body. It's a large watch uh, when you put it on. It looks like this. Yep, yep. Now, you say you've seen that before? Well, yes, you have. And you've seen that in the F6. Here's the F6 prototype. And this one is icon-driven, uh, black and white screen, whereas this one is icon-driven, uh, color screen. Mm hmm and same kind of thing, you press and you press and you get into your step count stuff. And this button takes you back. And then the outer buttons are kind of an up and down that will guide you through the different pages. By comparison, they're pretty much the same size watches. But the new F7 has the built-in GPS, as well as altitude and temperature and all the other sensors. Uh, so it's got more goodies in it. As far as the screen goes, the high contrast black and white or blue and, and, and black uh, is really, really good for outdoor viewing. Once you go to color, I got to admit that it's a little bit of a challenge to see this outside in the various configurations of these different shadings that you've got for the icons. You see that? This is just a lot brighter here, a lot brighter. Uh, but this is very colorful. So uh, just your choice, whichever you want. Of course, if you want the features like you're seeing here, the, the uh, temperature or the uh, bar barometric pressure or altitude, we'll, get, yeah, we'll go back. We're going to go through those. And your speedometer, all those are available on the new F7. And that's why it's a little bit more money. It's also got a change in the uh, band. It's a little less uh, bolsterous in all of the writing. This has got... Heart rate and water is almost like a promo. <laughs> yeah. and this one's uh, more subdued. It labels the buttons. It says sport and GPS in here, but that's about it. So we have a review on this one. You've seen that. Um, oh, by the way, I believe the charger uh, that we have on this one works on this one as well. It looks like it. Yeah, see that one? It's rejecting it. It doesn't want to come on there. But if I turn it this way... It snaps right in place. And I did use this charger to charge this watch so I could show you uh, the comparison. 
So you've got the same basic charger, just a little bit more defined as to which way the magnet is working uh, on this one than it is on, on uh, the new F7. So read that caution, make sure you've got it aligned properly. All right, let's begin. This again is the button that takes you into things and this takes you out of things. So this is going layers down and layers up. And these buttons up and down are moving you in a sense like if you could scroll, but you can't, through all of the different pages. So we activate it and we can go up. And if I go up one, I get into a file folder, then a person running, the compass, speedometer, altitude, barometric pressure, thermometer, your messaging if you have any, heart rate sensor, your sports area, and back to the folder again. Press this one and we'll come back into time. Let's go into one of these. Here's the folder. You go into it by pressing here. Now we use the up and down to go through all of these things. Well, up took me to the bottom, so I'm gonna go down to go down this way. There's a step, your basic step count set up. There's uh, walking and running and climbing, right? And biking and treadmill and laps, probably for the pool. Then you get into sedentary reminder, sleep time, your heart rate setup, and your overall settings. And that's all in that folder up one level. We'll come back and go in more detail in a moment. Next, we go into your... Uh, step count, which was the same thing we got into just simply by pushing this button. Now, if I push this up and back, I loop between these two screens. So we're see we're at this lower level and we're going back and forth showing you step count, um, which is none, calories burned. I don't know why we have some and uh, distance travel. It's fresh out of the box for this part, so I don't have any data. Uh, but when you press here, it'll show you your steps over time in a bar graph. So whatever you're in, be sure you press the up and down buttons to loop through the things that are there. Back up one level, come back here again. Now we go into heart rate. If I go into start, it's gonna actually start taking a heart rate with its one diode uh, sensor on here. And a little word of warning here, this is a drawback. You notice that, it's, uh, I don't have my finger on it. It's taking the pulse of thin air. And I notice it's somewhere between 70 and 75 beats per minute in midair. Um, number one has not yet implemented a uh, safety feature to determine if you're actually touching it or if it's just uh, making random measurements out there. And so you do get readings off of thin air. Supposedly, when you connect to it, you're going to get more accurate reading of your true heart rate um, but I don't have any verification of that, and I just suggest you use it as a toy, but not for any medical purposes. There's the disclaimer. It's claiming I'm up at 90 beats per second. I sure hope not. It might be possible. Eh, I'm feeling my carotid artery. No, I don't think I'm that high. Anyway, it has a heart rate uh, sensor built into it that continuously reads as long as you're in this mode. And again, now, if I press these buttons... I can go into the chart. There's the last 16 hours sitting in the box um, of the heart rate. I did a, a, a manual reset of everything uh, last night, uh, or yesterday actually. I actually made an attempt at doing this review and it turned out really bad, so I'm redoing the whole thing because I didn't know about all of this stuff. And so I can't leave out the charts. So there is a heart rate when I did not wear the, uh, the band at all um, over the last 16 hours. That will take you back one level, and we're going through the sequence as if I were swiping, right? Here's your messages. If you have any, you press start and you would see them, and then you back out of those, and you actually can read them. And now we're into the uh, thermometer. So we start the thermometer, and it's going to take a reading in centigrade of the ambient uh, temperature uh, made directly in the watch. And if I loop through here to the next screen, there's the last 16 hours uh, temperature. It was higher and then went down lower overnight. Not a radical change and you can't scale and you don't have any uh, degrees listed on here. It's a relative kind of a thing. But if you're out hiking 
you know, you can monitor how the, how the temperature is shifting while you're doing your, your workout. It's kind of fun. Something different. Okay, we're back here at temperature. We have to come up one level to here to go to the next thing, which is your barometric pressure, right? Into that, we get a number. Into this, we get a chart. And that's the last 16 hours shifting in the barometric pressure here. No comment. I really don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I'm, it probably is. Uh, again, back to here, back up one level, and now altitude. This gets kind of fun. Let's go in here. It's saying I'm at 41 feet above something, uh, whatever that was. If I now uh, cycle through here, here is my last four hours of altitude uh, change. And um, I probably pulled it out of the box an hour ago or so. So I'm not sure what we're seeing here because it's been sitting stationary in the box on the side of my desk. Um, but I go one more time and I can actually do a reset. Now, if I hit the start, I just reset everything. If I trigger that again, you see I'm at zero, basically one, two feet. Now, altitude is based on barometric pressure and it's how it's calculated and determined. And so we're seeing a little bit of random noise in here in terms of meters change. I presume if I started doing something that involved altitude change, I would see it go below or higher than where I am right now in that mode. And you'd start seeing a shift happening here because it just zeroed it out in the graph as the next four hours go through. And you do that again just by hitting the go at this point. Okay, so we back out of altitude. We can come into our speedometer. Now this requires GPS. So when I go in it, it's going to go and try to acquire GPS. And it isn't going to give you any information until it gets it. And I'm indoors now, but it does show you the number of satellites out of 14 it's trying to get as it uh, acquires. It does do well outdoors. It doesn't take very long. It'll get a good GPS lock. And then you can monitor your speedometer in uh, kilometers per hour. Okay, so these are inactive right now while it's attempting to get GPS. So I can't demo this mode until it you know, was actually hooked up. But you'll get uh, the reading that you saw in the manual. It just shows you the speed in two-digit numbers, I believe. Okay, we are here and now we can go to the compass we start the compass and it's going to want us to calibrate i've had a little trouble with the calibration on this i'm going to give it a try right now on camera if i have to do an edit it means that i had to get up and do a much bigger circle in order to get the calibration to work you roll it in a figure eight horizontal to the earth and you come back and it's not working so i'm going to pause and i'll come back once i get it calibrated Okay, there's the uh, compass. North is pointed toward me as usual, and it's pretty fast and accurate. Two things I don't like about it, though. One is it really does seem to need calibration all the time. It doesn't hold it very well. And two, why so tiny? It's got a really big screen, and it would be really nice if it had better overall markings. But perhaps because of... Um, you know, dim light conditions, they want you to be able to do this kind of thing outdoors to be able to see it, so they've made it small. So it really works for that. Uh, in a way, it's better that way than if it did take up the whole screen. Okay, that's the compass, and ah, they went back to calibration. Maybe you push the button and it recalibrates, but these are not doing anything uh, in the compass mode. And then we're into the sports mode. So from here we go in, now you have the selection of each of the sports. This is uh, walking, and we start it, and it begins counting your heartbeat, your time, and it looks like your overall steps for walking. When you press this button, you can switch to, um, wow, this looks like numbers of steps. Okay, that other one must have been distance, and this is calories burned. And switch here, and you've got laps, and you've got uh, distance. And that symbol looks like it might be GPS distance. And you press it once more. And look at this. You've got your zones for your heart rate. And then you've got a nice big time display. I love that part of this. 
you can actually have it back on a watch. Sometimes I'm working out and I don't really want to look at all of the nitty gritty data. I just want to see what time it is and how much more time I have before I got to be somewhere. And you can't see the clock. So having the ability to loop through and get the clock is great. So once again, you've got page one, two, three, four, five. Five pages on this. When you're done, you hit the stop here. Oh, no, you don't. That's a lap. That did a lap count uh, of, of the information. To stop it, unlike everything else you'd hit put here, push there, you have to, once to light it up, and two, to actually stop it. Now we press here, and you have the option of saving it, throwing it away, or resuming. And if I save it, by, and I was pushing that button to get to there. You see how complex this is? There, we saved the walker uh, routine, which can then be transferred to the tethering app, which we'll show you in a moment as well. Okay, while we're in this mode now, if I go here, I can come over and do the same kind of thing for running. Ah, but running needs GPS. So the walking didn't, the running will. And it's going to go through the dance of getting the GPS so I can't demo it, but it's going to have the same basic screens that you saw there. Likewise, for uh, trail hiking, with the addition of altitude, that'll be in there, and uh, cycling, and so forth. And so it's got all of the different sports, any of which that you want, you can go into and um, get the, the data recorded. And you saw the process you got to go through to take a lap, to stop it, to... Uh, exit it so that you can choose to save it or throw it away. All of those are available. And always you can push this to try to get back to the time because that ultimately will take you all the way to the top. Whoa, I just about finished editing this and realized we forgot to go in here and talk about the settings, the various settings for each of the different items. Uh, these are the setups, not the actual place you go in and do the activity. So when we go in here, you see you can actually, uh, well, see the results, I guess, there. And if we toggle over to here, that's where you can set your step count goal. You can do it in the app, I'm pretty sure, as well. But you can do it right here in the watch. Let's just verify by going over one more. Always get these backwards. Up is down. I'm going to go up to go down. Actually, that's down to go right. And I'm going to go in. Uh, let's go into running just to show you. Here we go. In running, there's your results of the day. If you want to see what you've done or switch over and set your running step goal. And each of these are individually, independently settable, right? So let's try climbing. What could our goal possibly be? Well, let's see. Oh, ah, okay. Bear with me. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to hit the down button to go to the right. I'm going to hit the top button to go in. I'm going to hit this button to go over, and I'm going to hit that button to show you. You can set a thousand whatevers, I imagine steps, because it seems that's all we're counting, uh, for climbing. So that's that option. And... Back out of here, we would have cycling and treadmill and so forth and so forth until you get to sedentary reminder. We go in here and pressing again, you can see where you can turn it on or off and how uh, many minutes you want to uh, pass before you're reminded to stand up. And click over here. You can set your start and stop time so it doesn't... Uh, annoy you during the middle of the night that you need to go to the bathroom or something, get a drink of water, right? And that's the sedentary settings. Then your sleep information. Here it'll show you how well you slept last night. And I don't see any options to go left or right on this. So that's all. It's a report to you from last night's sleeping. Then your heart rate settings. Now we're getting to some fun. Let's look at this. First of all, on this one, you can turn on or off the continuous heart rate monitoring right here. Save your battery or save your life. Which do you want? No, just kidding. 
Take it with a grain of salt. You'll never save your life with a heart rate reading from these watches, I tell you. Um, oh, no. Oh, I waited too long. Okay, we went up and then in. And then, well, you know what? I'm going to go backwards this way, this way. There we were. That's the fast way to get there. And then in. And now I'm going to switch over and go in to where, uh-oh, no, no, no. In, switch, and then in again here, right? Okay. This is where you can set an alarm. You can turn it on or off and go down, uh, go down this way to set the heart rate from, mm, what button should I push? This one? No, I guess that's uh, the lower one and that's, that's the upper one and that's the lower one. I'm trying to see where we set the values. Okay, 55, 50. Okay, it looks like 50 to 80 is the range Sorry, it's not focusing. That you can uh, you can get on the lower one. Now to go up, would that get me up? No, nope, that gets me out in. And okay, and now I'm on this one, and I want to change the range, and it goes from wow 90 90 to 180. So those are your brackets that you can put in here. And you'll get an alarm above or below that when you get your heart rate reading. Now, if the gosh darn heart rate sensor is accurate when you're actually working out, please leave a comment down below when you buy this watch and let us know, are you getting accurate heart rate readings? The roosters are, are concerned. I can hear them all squawking out there. This would be really, really cool that you have that capability in such a sophisticated watch if the accuracy of the data that produces the heart rate is there so we need to know do you get really valid heart rate especially in your upper aerobic zones okay please okay get us out of that out of that and then we come down here to settings finally the setup for the settings here is your fix for the gps when you get it you get your latitude and longitude no changes there come over here and we go into vibration and I've got vibration happening right now. I can turn it off or turn it on. I'll leave it on. Back out of here. Down to here. Where you have the auto brightness. That should be the twist your wrist to uh, see the time display. And again, we can set the time out for a long, long time. You know, up to 30 seconds. So you can have the thing on almost all the time. If you're in a dim enough place to be able to read it. And then you've got some alarms that you can set. And uh, there's the hour and um, minute, I presume, that you could go through to set your alarms. Again, you can do a lot of that from the apps. This is your date set if you want to set manually. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Your manually, your date, and your time. And then here, brightness. This is the overall brightness of the watch. Now, you see all the silly reflections of my ceiling and everything in here? That's because... Uh, <laughs> This is not a bright screen. When you have a really bright thing, like I show you my phone and, and the whole background goes black and all you see is the bright phone. If I have a really dim uh, screen, I don't, the, the, the background contrast overrides it. And I've got that issue with this one and I talked too long and lost the whole darn thing. So, <laughs> okay, there, 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 there. Let's back it up to here, there, all right. They're setting three. They're setting one. That's the lowest, middle, and brightest. And I'm still messing around with me. I mean, you can see me on top of uh, the brightness. Um, yeah, that's like as low as it'll go. So the range of brightness on this colored screen watch is inhibitory to outdoor use, period. Statement made. Um, now, come over here. This is where you put in your stuff, your gender, and your age, and height in centimeters, weight in kilograms, and that's it. And that, oh, no, no, we've got more. This resets the whole watch, wipes out all your data, all those little charts you saw that are four hours and 16 hours long, clears all that stuff out, uh, and resets the watch completely, and... This is the information for this particular smart band. And that is everything in the settings for the watch from the folder off of the home screen. 
Whew. Let's take a look at the, uh, the tethering app now. The F7 likes to tether to H+, which, like I said, you can find in the Google Play Store. We open that one and go into Device, and it binds it. And it's called the CF12 for some reason. That's what it's going to show up as when you uh, look for it on the Bluetooth. And it doesn't have any data on it right now, but it's in the process of syncing. So let's just look through the uh, things you've got. you got a smart alarm clock where you can set uh, reminders uh, directly from the app to the watch. The sedentary reminder, you can set your beginning and ending times and what interval you'd like it to have. You have a screen saver time. How long will it be before it times out? Now, if you're going to be able to charge yours every day, you could set it like way up at 30 seconds or something. And then when it turns on, which it just did, it's going to keep that display lit for you for 30 seconds before it goes off. And that's pretty cool. You could almost have it as an always on watch that way. All these are toggles. They turn green if you're active and uh, white if they're not. So you can have it notify you of incoming calls. You can change metric to English. Uh, you have your all-day heart rate capability, and you saw we were getting a graph for that. And uh, twist the wrist to show the time is, uh, is available. And see, it's still on after there. It finally went out after the 30 seconds. Oh, and it went on again because I'm twisting my wrist, I guess. Very sensitive. It's going on and off. Okay. Notifications, the same old dance there. You can set up and schedule notifications to come to your watch. You can sync and bind it, clear it of data, and clear the app data inside the app, and check it for a firmware upgrade. And it did, and it says it's got the latest version. So we're good to go there. And that's everything inside of here. I don't believe this does anything. It's still trying to sync. Yeah. Just let it go, okay? So that was the device. Then under the mine, this is where you set your stuff. Um, you go in here and you get all of your specifics and you modify those. These are the defaults. And that'll give you your body mass index and uh, your burning heart rate for uh, fat burning. And again, checks the firmware version. There, finally completed the sync. So that's you, that's the device. This is the overall calendar that's gonna show you the history of what you've done over time with these little uh, bar things in color, the activities that you've done. And uh, there's a little biking one that I did uh, a while, uh, yesterday, I guess it was, uh, to test it out to see how that worked. And let's take a look at it. It's gonna bring up the map of where I'm located. And it's going to show you down at the bottom in kilometers, uh, time, pace, and calories against the actual track on the map. That's the activities. And then your home, which is what it normally opens into, has got your basic step count, calories, and distance against a chart for today. All right, just barely beginning. Then you can slide and see last night's sleep information your continuous heart rate, which would be great mm, if it didn't read thin air. It's off right now, and it's still giving me heart rate. I really don't like that. But you know when you're wearing it, and so you can just look at that part of the chart. However, you can totally disregard the minimum and maximum and average if you take your watch off uh, and don't have it on. Sorry, it's, that's my feeling about it. And... Um, Someday they'll get that fixed. Okay, that's uh, home. So that's everything there is about the app. And we've covered everything there is about the watch. And a reminder that at this point, we are in pre-order from Banggood. This is a prototype you've seen here, folks. It may change somewhat. I doubt it. Um, it's just about to, to be launched. So check in the show notes down below. Uh, hopefully we'll have a, a, they don't even know I'm doing this, uh, a link for you from Banggood. I just printed this out because it's all I could find. But all our other suppliers, if they get this watch in too, are uh, going to give them the opportunity to put a good buying link and a discount for you down there as well. So uh, no matter 
who uh, is carrying it, as long as they've been a supporting partner of this uh, channel, we're going to have a link there for you. So check it out, and I'll try to sequence them by least expensive first once I get their coupon stuff. Now, we're just about done, but I wanted to give a big shout out to you guys and a big thank you because it's because of you, really, honestly, especially when you subscribe to this channel that something like this is possible to be reviewed here. Just today, I got notice and an invitation to review a brand new Android 7 round smartwatch from a company we have had no contact with up until now. This is big. This is brand new. It's full Android 7, and look what it's saying. It's custom made for smart watches, and a sample is on its way, and I gotta tell you, it's only happening because you subscribe. So I really, really appreciate your participation, cooperation, collaboration in this channel. Together, together, we're gonna bring in some amazing stuff to look at. Okay, thanks for watching. As usual, we'll see you again really soon.